Welcome, class. This is period five. Everybody in period five, say hello. Hello. Hi. We're recording a course for period six, and all the people who decided to take today off from school, welcome to your review class. Why don't we do this whole stuff? We're going to uh, start by going over the quiz from last week. So let me pass these back to you. attention up here please and I'll put the questions on the board that we've covered uh, that we had for the other day. Uh, number one, um, the S orbital is the shape of a dumbbell. Somebody tell me what's wrong with that statement. Raise your hand please. Pay. Okay. P orbitals would be the dumbbell shape. What's an S orbital shape? JP? Spherical. Spherical. Okay. So this is false. Number two, the amount of energy carried by a weight decreases, its wavelength increases. Now listen, here's how you got to think about this. Draw a wave and figure out, here's your chart down here, okay? To the right, our frequency increases. That's these numbers, right? Frequency gets higher and higher and higher as we go towards gamma. And wavelength gets shorter and shorter and shorter as we go to the left, to the to the right, that means the wavelength gets longer to the left. Now, which one of these is going to be energy related? Okay, think about radio waves and X-rays. Which one has more energy? Do you think X-rays or radio waves? Houston. Yeah, X-rays are going to give you cancer eventually if you have too many of them. And gamma radiation will give you cancer real fast. And they have the ability to go through your body, which is why x-rays take a picture of your bones. Radio waves bounce off of your body, OK? So the energy increases from left to right as we approach gamma. So let's see what this says. If the energy decreases, its wavelength increases. Yes. So if energy decreases going to the left, our radio waves are big long ones, and our gamma radiation is the tiny 10 to the negative 12th ones, okay? So this is a true statement, just thinking about the shapes of these waves on the electromagnetic spectrum. Number three, there are five different types of d orbitals. True, we have a picture in your textbook on page 154. We looked at them on the screen, five different shapes, five different types. There are seven types of f orbitals, five types of d orbitals, three types of p orbitals, and one type of s orbital. Okay, from this chart, what has a frequency of 10 to the 8th? So we kind of look down here and find the frequency. It's increasing, so here's 10 to the 8th TV. Good? Letter D. Which type of wave has a wavelength of 10 to the negative 12th? Well, here's 10 to the negative 12th, and your choice is gamma or x-rays, and since there is no x-ray choice, your answer is C, gamma radiation. Okay, I gave you another one of these. We had one last week, and some of you didn't know how to do it. This week, you should know how to do it. So how do we calculate the frequency? I take one wave and divide by the time. One wave divided by two seconds equals what? 0.5. 
So half of a wave per second. Half of a wave here, half of a wave here, one second, one second. So you can either take one wave and divide by the time, or you can find one second and figure out how much of a fraction of a wave that is, if you want to do that. Okay, this is a what kind of orbital? P orbital. Which one of these is the correct electron dot diagram or Lewis dot diagram for silicon? It's letter A. One, two, three, four. We look at the periodic table. It's right underneath carbon. So we go one, two, three, four. Four valence electrons, four dots around it. Number nine and ten. Go over to my left. Turn the lights back on. Okay, the one on the left is the first problem there. It says a radio station broadcasts at 122.9 megahertz. That's its frequency. We should know this number from the beginning of the chapter. I had you memorize it. Eight, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second is the speed of light or the speed of any electromagnetic radiation. And so we're looking for wavelength. Calculate the wavelength lambda. So we write down what we're looking for. What do we know? The formula C equals lambda times nu. Solve for lambda. Lambda equals C divided by nu. Substitute the numbers in and give me one conversion factor. Okay? So how do I figure out the conversion factor? Excuse me. How do I figure out the conversion factor? I go down here, I go from my base, which is a hertz, up to a megahertz. 10 times 10 times 10 times a thousand is 10 to the sixth hertz in one megahertz. If I set this up right, the megahertz cancel out. The hertz cancels out with the per second right here, because we know that one hertz is one per second. And we're left with meters, which we should get for wavelength. In your calculator, 3 divided by 122.9, 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 122.9, divided by 10 to the 6th should give you 2.441 meters. On many of your papers, I wrote sig figs. I did not take off a point yet. Okay? Because I warned you earlier this week, I will start enforcing that this quarter. Um, so, how do I figure out sig figs? Why don't I use three sig figs? Why don't I use one sig fig? Why don't I even care about the speed of light? Somebody tell me. Kendall. It's a constant. Anything that's a constant, we disregard as far as sig figs goes. The speed of light is a constant. This number here, Planck's constant, is a constant, the gravitational constant the letter number pi, all of those are constants. We're going to ignore them. So since I have four sig figs here, i got to have four sig figs down here. Okay? Four sig figs, this is a constant, and this is a constant. So I have to have four sig figs. The second problem here says tiny water droplets, blah, 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 blah. What is the energy? So I'm looking for the energy. So that's this formula. E equals Planck's constant times frequency. About a week ago, you had a homework assignment. I said, it said, memorize and learn this formula. So hopefully you did. So we're looking for the energy in joules. I know the frequency. It's given in the problem. I know Planck's constant. It's given in the problem. And so I'm simply going to put them in the formula, multiply them together, punch them in the calculator, and get this answer here. Real straightforward. The seconds cancel out with the per second here, so these seconds, joule seconds, cancel out with those per second and I'm left with joules. And it has to be three sig figs here, so it gives me three sig figs here. Okay? Again, this is a constant, it's Planck's constant, so we disregard those four sig figs. Okay? Questions here? Two formulas you need to have memorized. You should know what C is, what its number is, what its units are, what it stands for. You should know lambda and what its units are. You should know nu and what its units are. You should know H, what it is. You don't have to memorize it. I'll give it to you. But you should know that it is a constant. And it multiplied by frequency gives you energy.
joules. Questions on the quiz? Pretty straightforward. Yes? Pass those back, please. And take out your bell work book. We're going to go through the bell work questions. If somebody in period six reminds me before the test on Monday, I'll make sure you get your bonus points for that quiz. Yeah. Okay, let's look at the bell work questions. Um, these are number 85 and 86. I want to go through all of them because these are great review questions for us regarding this chapter. Okay, number 85, write each element's orbital notation and complete electron configuration. So there's two things we're doing with each one of these. The first one says beryllium. So the first thing we need to do is draw these little boxes for orbitals. The first one's 1s and the second one's 2s. Okay? So this is what the book calls orbital notation. I call them off-bow diagrams, and I might be wrong about that, but again, this is what they're asking for. So I'm going to take beryllium, we're going to look at the periodic table, find out it has how many electrons, four, and so we're going to put them in the boxes. The off-bow principle says I've got to fill energy level one before I fill energy level two. So that's hydrogen and helium, and then lithium, beryllium. Done. Do I need to draw boxes for the p orbitals? Not if there's no electrons that go in there. Do the p orbitals exist at this point? This is a deep thinking question. Will, answer. Yeah. Why? Because we have a That's true, but why wouldn't there be an orbital there waiting to accommodate the next electron that comes along? Anybody, help me out. This gets to the root of what is an orbital. Well, would it make the mass different? Okay, why for beryllium aren't there any fjords? True, but why wouldn't there be, you know, a box waiting here for an electron? What are orbitals, guys? It's just a probability. Remember, an orbital is a probability that we might find an electron in a given space. If there is no electron here, there is absolutely zero probability of having an electron there. It's like, what's the probability of finding you at school on Sunday? Unless there's some special event going on, it's zero, okay? School's not open on Sunday. Why would I be here, Mr. Devsky? Okay? It's what's the probability of finding a car in the Faith Academy parking lot at midnight on, you know, on a Saturday night? Again, unless there's some special event going on, it's zero. The place is locked up tight, nobody's around, the gates are shut, and unless your car broke down Friday afternoon, and there's no cars there. Okay? So there's a zero probability there's no orbital. Orbitals are not a space guys. Orbitals are a probability. Remember Schrodinger's work? Schrodinger said, this is all my mathematical construct. We think there is a high probability that there's an electron here. But until that electron shows up, there's zero probability, so there's zero orbital. Okay, so don't forget that. Let's do the next one. Uh, we're going to go to, what's the next one? Help me out. Mm -hmm. Aluminum. Aluminum's a longer one. So we're going to need a few more boxes here. So I'm going to have my 1s orbitals, my 2s orbital, my 2p orbitals. That's going to take me all the way across. And then 
the next row we're going to need a 3s orbital and some 3p orbitals. Okay. So number one, we start adding electrons. Up down, up down. Which rule tells me they got to be up, down, up, down? Joanna? Um, Off bow, 100, poly. Um, Go ahead, Michael. Is it a bow? Nope. Um, nope. <laughs> the poly exclusion principle. Exclusion. Exclusion means no, I'm not letting you in unless you're oppositely spinning. Okay? Okay? Off bow means I can't fill energy level 2 until I fill energy level 1, and I can't fill P's until I fill S's. Hund rule says that I'm going to put one electron here, one electron, one electron here, and then I come back and pair them up. That's the bunk beds. I don't need bunk beds until I got enough kids to justify bunk beds, okay? But the Pauli exclusion principle says each of these have to have opposite spins. Poly exclusion, opposite spins. And I designate that by a down arrow and an up arrow, or an up arrow and a down arrow. Okay? Doesn't matter which one comes first. No, not really. So I've got 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s. We are up to sodium and magnesium and aluminum. And I gotta stop there, because aluminum has only one electron in that P block. So it's got one electron in the first p orbital, and really, the second and third p orbitals don't even exist yet. We can draw the boxes and leave them empty, they do in the book sometimes, but they're not really there yet. How would we write the electron configuration here? We're just going to copy it down. 1s2, right here. 2s2, how many electrons inside that box? 2p, 246, 3s2, 3p1. This is the electron configuration. This is the orbital diagram, two parts. This one up here would have been 1s2, 2s2. Beryllium, aluminum. Questions? The next one on the bell work says do it for nitrogen. How many electrons does nitrogen have, frankly? Seven. Okay, so we're going to start right here. One S, two electrons, opposite spins. Two S, two electrons, opposite spins. Lithium or beryllium. Now over here, when I get to 2P, one electron here, or boron, one electron here, carbon, one electron here, nitrogen. Say, Mr. Desi, why don't you put them all in the first box? Because of which rule? Hun's rule, okay, good. But also, I can't put three in one box because of Hun's rule. But also, yeah, all exclusion, I can't, if I try to put three here, I have to put violate both those rules, Hun's rule and Paul exclusion. Okay, so Hun's rule says I can put each kid in its own bedroom before I start pairing them up, and so this is nitrogen. It's going to look like 1s2, 2s2, my goodness, that's horrible, 2s2, and 2p3. The electron configuration does not show, does not show anything about spin, okay, and it doesn't care. Just where are those electrons? The last one given here is sodium. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, got one more. So let's see. We got one s, two electrons, two s, two electrons, two p, electron, 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 two, four, six, eight, ten. We're shooting for eleven. Three s. Check. Good. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s, 1.
Check your answer. 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 1 better equal 11, and it does. Two thumbs up. Okay? Check your poly exclusion. No two arrows going in the same direction. Check your Hun's rule. I've got 2 and 2 and 1. Check your off bow principle. I filled 3 after I filled 2. I filled the P's after I filled the S's. Good job. Questions here? Okay. Number 86, use noble gas notation. So these are the shortcut ones to write the electron configuration for the following. Krypton. Who can give me the noble gas configuration for krypton? Houston. Is this IR since it is noble gas? What do I need to do with it? Got to put brackets around. Done. Okay? Ta-da. Ooh, I like that one. Give me another one of those. <laughs> okay? You could do the same for neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, and oganesson. Just done. Okay? They are noble gases. They are the stopping points on the road of the periodic table because they are satisfied. They are stable. They got eight electrons in their outer shell. Next one, phosphorus. Okay? Somebody tell me where to start. Kristen. Um, they are <clears throat> Look where phosphorus is first. Okay, now back up to the previous noble gas. Okay, good. Neon is the most recent noble gas in energy level 2, and then we have 3s2, 3p3, and we're at phosphorus. Done. Okay, questions? I saw a couple. Oh, what? oh yeah, okay. Questions? Wasn't very good. Okay, because neon, here's phosphorus. Phosphorus is in the third row of the periodic table. And phosphorus number 15 is going to have the previous one. Neon takes me all the way up to atomic number 10. Here's number 11 and 12. That's going to be sodium, magnesium, 13, 14, 15. Aluminum, silicon, and phosphorus. Okay, so we're in three because neon goes one and two. Buried inside this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Then I go 3s2 because the third row of the periodic table is the third energy level. Okay? The next one is a fun one. Anybody want to? Volunteer. Houston. Krypton. OK, we're starting with Krypton again. Good. 4 is 2. 5. OK. Let them work. D2. Okay, the D block, zirconium, if you've ever heard of cubic zirconia, it's like fake diamonds, right? That's the rock that it comes from, zirconium. Um, and zirconium is in the D block. So it's the second one of the D block, the second group of the D block. So it's, the D block is always going to be one energy level behind the S block. Okay, so we go 5S2 and then 4D2. Done. Good. And the last one here is lead. Lead is way down there, number 82. So which noble gas do I start with? PJ? JP? <laughs> XE. This is xenon, okay? And the X is like the xylophone sound that you learned in school. What's the X in the alphabet symbol of xylophone? It's like the only word you can think of. Now you got a second one, xenon, okay? Xenon, okay, and that is at the end of row five. So what's the next thing that comes after that, JP? Six. Good. Orbital. 
this. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now, when we get to 6S2, we got to think of this periodic table here. And where do we go after barium? I hit this block. What block is that? Okay, the F block. Okay? And then I got to get all the way over here to lead. So I got to go through the F's and then the D's and then back into the P's. Okay? So, you're right, 6S2. Okay, we know it's going to be F and we got to get a bunch of F's. How many F's maximum? Because we're blowing all the way through it. Good. And then we're going to get to the D's, and we're going to blow all the way through those, because I'm heading all the way to lead. How many maximum in D? Count how many in the middle there. It's the D block. Ten. Good. I'm helping it. And then we're going to get to the P's, and we're looking at lead right there, so it's the second one in, right? I just need to know how do I figure out these numbers? Okay. It could be four, five. Good. Okay, so the F block is always two levels behind. This was the big point yesterday. F is two behind. D is one behind. Behind what? Behind the row of the periodic table we're on. Behind the major energy level that we're in. This is the sixth energy level. And we go down to the 4F, and then the 5D, and then the 6P. Back to there. Okay? And again, your key is to remember your periodic table looks like this. So we go from S to F to D, then back to P. Okay? And then in two levels behind. And that's kind of obvious because you get this big gap, two rows thick. And then the D's are one level behind because they're actually supposed to be up here. Not really, but again, that's how this energy level thing works. These are one energy level behind, buried inside. The F electrons are buried inside even more. Somebody on one of the videos said that all of the F um, elements look the same. They're metals, they're shiny, they all do almost exactly the same thing. And that's because all of them, they have more electrons, but those electrons are buried inside. They can't escape, they can't react. They can't do much of anything. They're locked up in jail. Okay, we call it the shielding effect. Okay. Bell work is done. Put that away. Put your thinking hats on. We're going to quiz you a little bit on elements. Okay, I will call on you. Please do not help your neighbor. If you look completely blank and you give me a blank stare, I will give you another one. And, um, and then we'll, we'll move on to the next person. I'll come back to you in a minute or something, okay? So you, you can say pass, or you can say, mm -hmm, and I'll, I'll skip over. <coughs> okay, John Will. KR. You got it. You can give me another one here. Yeah, there's no words up there. Manganese. Nicely done. K. Zinc. Shelby. Lead. Michael. Well, vanadium, okay, vanadium. I think this is where the Marvel Universe got the word vibranium from, because it is a metal, it's extremely hard, extremely dense. I think they stole it from vanadium, but they wanted it to be kind of cool. Okay, Hannah? Oxygen. Oh, we can use Can I give you another one? Germany. Nice, named after Germany. Just remember, GE German, okay? Some German guys found it. Scandium. This one's named after Scandinavia. Okay? And Will. <laughs> it's, uh, wires in the wall. Oh, yes. Okay, so when you're studying these this weekend, if you struggle with the C's, get all five of those C's out. Plain old C, Will, is what? Plain old C. Carbon. CL. CA. CU. CO. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so if you're struggling with those C's, get them all next to each other. Say, man, okay. Okay, make sure you got those down. Alex. Iron. Kendall. Nice. Franklin. 
Silly Con. Yeah. <coughs> Drayana. Beryllium. Another one. Drayana. Good. Houston. You got it. Now, most common error in every chemistry class forever is to put an L behind this. Do not. Because FL is now an official element, number 114. It's fluorovium. Okay? Years ago, you'd say, hey, there's nothing else named FL. Why can't I call fluorine FL? But now that FL is an actual element, it's just plain wrong. Okay? So F for fluorine. Um, fluorine. Rain. You are uranium. Radioactive. HG, Peyton. It's a liquid metal. Floats around. It's little bubbles. We use it in thermostats. Name first first planet going around the sun is named after this guy. <laughs> yes, the Roman messenger god. Okay, you deserve another cool. one. You deserve another one. Idiot, I'm no <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, I'm gonna say idiot. Io. Iodine. Iodine. JP. 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 That's not. Did you really say that? Because that's it, isn't it? Arsenic. on camera. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you know those. And know them backwards as well. So if I say um, what element is um, Mg? Frankly. No. no. <laughs> Hg is Mg. Magnesium. magnesium. If I say what element is um, Cr? John Will. Cr. Uranium? That's a game. <laughs> You're close. <laughs> CR. It goes on the buffers of cars. Chromium. Okay, chromium. Hey, that's the sixth C one, right? By, by the way. Okay, you got C, CA, CL, CO, CU, CR, and CL. Okay. The other common error is AL for aluminum and AS for arsenic. Okay? And, uh, <laughs> and then remember, what's K? What's K? It's KKK potassium. Good. And what's phosphorus? P -p -p -p. Phosphorus. Okay. Okay, make sure you know those. Good. Take out um, your homework from last night. And that's number 87, 90, and page 170. These are great for review. So I'm glad to go through this. Number 87 takes and works backwards. What element is represented by these configurations? 87A. It says 1S2, 2S2, 2P5. Okay, now there's two ways of doing these. You either look at the periodic table and go 1s2 hydrogen helium, 2s2 lithium beryllium, 2p5 or carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine. How many did it that way? Okay, that works. It's great. Okay. If you want to cheat, you just take 2 plus 2 plus 5 and look at which element it is. Okay. <laughs> it's not cheating, but that's how it works. Okay. It is 2 plus 2 plus 5 is 9, and which element is atomic number 9? It's got nine electrons, it's fluorine. Okay? I got you all. So, I got you. Okay. Check your answers. Number B, Peyton. AR, 4S2. Okay, good job. Number C, somebody else besides Peyton, because he says he's got them all. Let's find out. Number C, Xenon, 6S2, 4F4. Kristen? Indeed. M. ND. ND. This is neodymium. It is uh, used in magnets. If you've ever gone to the store, it says rare earth magnets or neodymium magnets. This magnet that I have over here <coughs> is a neodymium magnet. Okay? And it is extremely strong and it's got neodymium in it. ND. The next one is. 
Where are we? Okay, Krypton, 5s24, d10, 5d4. Let's go, Kendall. Tellurium, nicely done. TE, Tellurium. Number E, Radon, 7s2, 5f13. Peyton. Thallium. Nope. Shelby. Who's it named after? Mendeleev, yes. Okay, the guy who gave us the periodic table, Mendeleev. This is his element. Okay, they named one after him. Figured he gave us the periodic table. We might as well name one after him. Right up here, guys. Let's look at this one for a second. Okay, Mendeleevium MD. You can call it the doctor element if you want. RN is over here, radon. And then we're in the last row. So we're going to go 7s2. And then it says go 4d. Uh, 5F13, so 7S2, 5F13, stop right there, that's the 14th one, here's the 13th one, MD, where were you at, I was right above it, right above it, okay, and then the last one here is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D10, 4P5, and that's exactly how you read that, by the way, well, Romine, Romine or bromine, your choice of pronunciation. Just like iodine or iodine, no, I guess it's iodine. <laughs> Iodine. Okay, um, number 90, draw an electron dot diagram for these. First one is carbon, done. How do I know it has four dots? I look at the periodic table, one, two, three, four. We only worry about S and P orbitals. Maximum of eight, minimum of one. So for the same reason yesterday we saw that everything in group one has one electron in its outer shell. Everything in group two has two. Everything in group 13 has three. Group 14 has four. Group 15 has five. Group 16 has six. Group 17 has seven. Group 18 has eight. So we just need to look at carbon, boom. Every other one on this list, guys, all you need to do is look up the Look, do exactly the same thing. So the second one says arsenic. Find it, it's right underneath nitrogen and phosphorus. So just put your dots here around your asinine, I mean your arsenic. Mr. Dempsey, it doesn't matter where we start. If it instead of the head like one, it doesn't matter where as long as we fill out the outside first. Yeah. Well on these, um, you have one have one on each side. Okay. We don't pair them up for the same reason that we had the Hunt's rule. Okay, so we're kind of applying Hunt's rule when we do these dot diagrams. On this one, one, two, three, four, and then I've got a fifth one, and it doesn't matter which side it's on. Okay, put that fifth one with one of them, but we never put more than two electrons on any one side of these elements. Polonium, way down there underneath oxygen, it's going to have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> you can pick any two sides to put the two extra electrons on. Potassium, boom, and barium. Boom, boom. Done, okay? So you should be able to do that for any element in group, in the S block or in the P block. We don't use these much for the D's or F blocks for obvious reasons. They're a little bit more complicated than just showing these electrons. Okay, on the next page, please. Multiple choice, cosmic rays. What in the world are cosmic rays? Okay, if you remember our electromagnetic spectrum, there's a like, Roman man invented very unusual X-ray guns, right? Well, cosmic comes beyond the gamma. So it's even more radiation higher frequency, shorter wavelength than gamma. So it is outer space usually. These are the kind of energy that, um, that long space flights um, that NASA's worried about. What kind of effect will cosmic radiation have? Because there's no way to shield it. Even the densest metal in the world won't block it. And the problem is you can't make your rocket ship out of the densest metal in the world because you never get it off the ground. Okay, so, um, that's one of the things they're worried about in Mars. Somebody was asking me this morning about the poster in the back. And they said, how come they're going to have to live underground on Mars if we ever have a colony on Mars? 
and it's because of cosmic radiation. Mars has no atmosphere. Um, it has 3% of the atmosphere that Earth does, has a tiny little atmosphere, but there's nothing to block the radiation from the sun or the radiation from outer space. So that's why if we ever do go to Mars, we'll be living in the, what they call the lava tubes underneath the volcanic regions of Mars. But question one, you're going to use the same formula we did over here, lambda times nu equals c. What are we going to get for an answer here? This was your homework last night, so question one on page 170. Go ahead, Michael. D. Yeah, 1.12 times 10 to the 21st hertz, or per second. Okay, so you're going to use that formula over there the same way. You're going to solve for um, nu. Nu equals C divided by lambda, punch in your calculator. Number two, which is the correct electron dock structure for indium? Gloria? C. It is. It's got three electrons just like the one we didn't do up here. Okay. Indium is right there underneath boron, so it's going to have three. Boron's going to have three, aluminum's going to have three, indium's going to have three, gallium's going to have three, tellurium's going to have three, and nihomium's going to have three. That's where the homies live, by the way. Number three, to which sublevel do all these orbitals belong? Drana? B. Letter B, the P orbitals. Number four, how many electrons can reside in the P orbital sublevel, they call it? Houston? C. Six, yes, C6. Now, remember, we've got only one S orbital, guys, and it can hold how many electrons? Two. Okay. I've got three P orbitals, each of which can hold two electrons. So what's the maximum occupancy in the P's? Okay, I've got five d orbitals, each of which can hold two, so what's the maximum occupancy? Ten. And I've got seven f orbitals, each of which can hold two, so what's the maximum occupancy? And if I take two plus six plus ten plus fourteen, I have this whole picture. It's thirty-two elements across. Okay? Two plus fourteen plus ten plus six. Thirty-two. That defines our periodic table. Two plus fourteen. Plus 10 plus 6. Cool. Number 5 is a stupid question. Please ignore it. I understand why they, the incorrect answer should be D. They're using the 2n squared formula, which I told you about a couple days ago. But there is no way on the correct table you can get 50 electrons in, an or in a shell. So why do they even ask you a stupid question like that? Okay? So I won't ask you a stupid question like that. So the correct answer, in my opinion, should be 32, but it's not one of the possibilities. So ignore number five. Number six, using noble gas notation, what is the ground state electron configuration for cadmium? Number six, frankly, it is not because of cadmium right there. Oh, because of the thing in the brackets at the front. So we want to back up from cadmium to the previous row at the very end. And it should be krypton. And letter D has xenon, not krypton. Everything else is the same. You just pick the wrong noble gas. Do you see it? So from cadmium, right there, we're going to back up and go to the end of this one. So it's going to be krypton and then 5s2. 4d10. This will be letter C. Uh, I was, I'm sorry. I'm Wrong question. I know. I have a lot. Number seven. Brinkley. Number seven. What is the element that has the ground state electron configuration of xenon plus all that stuff? Good. The Wizard of Osmium. Okay. That's where all the munchkins are. Follow the Gilbert Road. Follow the Gilbert Road. Where is Oz, by the way? I'm looking for it. It's so good. It's, 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 it's right here. Uh, I was just looking at if it's close to gold, which is the yellow brick road, by the way. It's getting there. Follow the yellow brick road. Osmium, meridian, platinum, and gold. That's a lot. Like in Lions and Tigers and Bears, so am I. Right? Isn't that the same, same movie? Lions and Tigers and Bears. So instead of Lions and Tigers and Bears, it's Osmium, meridian, platinum, and gold. Follow the yellow brick road. It rhymes. I'm learning something. Here we go. Number eight, what is the complete electron configuration of scandium? 
Alex, you're off the quiet. Number eight. <laughs> yes, I like it that way. <laughs> eight is A. Good job. What is wrong with the other ones? If anybody noticed something like the 3P7, that should look really weird to you, okay? Can P hold seven? No! Okay. And then, so that eliminates B and D. And then if you look at the other ones, it says 3P5 before it gets to 4S2. Which rule is that violating on letter C? It goes 3P5 and then 4S2. Which rule? You need to know this. Un, poly, or off bow. Houston. Yes. You said the right answer a minute ago. That's why I was hoping you'd say it again. Michael. No. Huh? Afbal, yes, because they've started filling the 4s orbitals and they haven't finished filling the 3p. It goes 3p5. You can't leave it empty. You can't leave it partly empty. You can't leave a missing electron before you move on. So Afbal says we got to fill them up before we move on. I got to fill the bottom shelves before I move to the top shelves. Um, number nine, which is not evidence that a chemical change has occurred, Michael. Yes, and that's because we can't violate the law of conservation of matter. On the next page, why is this not the correct electron configuration for germanium? What's wrong with it? So there's one little error there. Shelby. Instead of carbon, it's going to be Exactly. The D needs to be one level behind. Nicely done. Number 16, which of the four pictures shows an orbital diagram that violates the off-bow principle of Kristen? Letter D is correct. Why is that? It didn't fill the S before it went on to the P's. Good job. Number 17, which shows the orbital diagram for the element beryllium? Houston? B, good. And number 18, which one of these gives the correct percent error? Michael? E. Hmm? E. E. Okay, how do we calculate that? We subtract those two numbers from each other. 37.2 minus 36.1, take the absolute value and divide by 36.1. You'll get 0 0.0305, which might well then multiplies by 103.05%. And the last one, which method of separating components is based on boiling points? I'm going to pick on A. Good job. Okay, questions on the homework? Okay, I want you to turn. You got your books open. Which one? Yeah, he's been in here all morning. I chased him around during the test period, too. <laughs> Couldn't catch him. Um, okay, listen up. Use your book this weekend. Look through all this stuff. There's a lot of questions here we haven't answered. Um, you can watch this video, of course, if you want. You've seen me once, but you can watch me again. Or I might post my period 4.1 as well, so you can watch a different version of this class. It's the same stuff. Number two, look through the questions at the end of the chapter. There's a lot of good stuff here. If you completely stuff, shoot me an email over the weekend, and I'll try and help you. Number three, I'm here today after school for at least an hour. If anybody wants some extra drill on elements or orbital diagrams, or electron configurations or anything else in this chapter. Number four, you can see me Monday morning, but as long as you promise not to hog half an hour time. If you got a short question, if you want me to check an answer on something, please bring those Monday morning. Um, number next, I want you to look at page 160 with me, okay? I've got three minutes, I want to do three more of these electron configurations with you, or I'm gonna make you do it. Page okay, 170, the homework assignment there says, write electron configurations for the following elements. Let's try antimony. <laughs> number 51. SB, number 51. Who wants to give it a try? Peyton, you're up. 1S2. Go. 2S2. 2P. Or, uh, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2, 3p6, 4d, 
put your periodic table back cover of your book if you need to. Okay, right there. Three P six, you're up to R one. So it'd be four S two. Yeah. See how it, that fixes itself. Four. No. Three uh, D six. How many in the D block? Uh, ten. Three D ten. Going. And then four. P. Six. Keep going. He's doing great. And then it'd be. Two or uh, five S two. Yep. Five. You're at strontium. Oh. Or strontium. Four D ten. Good. Four. Wait, hold on. I'm on the F block. Hmm? I'm on the F block. Nope, not yet. So it would be 5P6. No, three. Three. Okay, we're there. 5P3. 5P3. Done. Nice. Okay. I'll pull a lot better for you. You need to. Okay. Bro. Oh, all right. That helped me so much. I had no idea what I was doing. I legit thought I was reading.